Blazing Vortex continues this trend of legacy support or bringing back new cards for archetypes of the past. We've already seen it with our Armed Dragons. We've seen it with Skull Serpents. We've seen it with Digital Bug. And of course, one that I wanted to get to and just haven't been able to due to prioritizing topics is Constellars. Now, this was one of the first decks that I ever played when I was kind of trying to get into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. It was never like great, but it was decent enough to hold its own. And I just always thought it had really cool artwork and it was neat that it could like do a lot of things. Although it doesn't really do any one thing particularly well. Uh, just a little bit of backstory before we look at the new card and sort of take a look at what the archetype has available to it right now. Constellars came out in Dual Terminal originally, and then they were officially released in the TCG in Hidden Arsenal 7. There was not a ton of value to them early, outside of like Constellar M7, which is just a generically good Xyz. And Pleiades has seen spikes in price and spikes in play from time to time in anything that can make light level 5 monsters. But Constellars have been an Xyz summoning deck, that's their strategy, that's sort of what they do. Now I'm kind of wondering whether or not the new one, which is Constellar Caduceus, or Caduceus, I might have mispronounced that, is going to be enough to take the deck to a different level. So let's take a look at this card first. Uh, before we do jump into the video, though, I do want to ask guys, if you have not already subscribed, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 3100 by November. We have nine days left. We are at 3096 at the time I'm making this video, meaning that we are four away. If we hit 3100 at the, by the start of November 1st, I will be doing a giveaway for the month of November. So thank you guys for supporting. If you haven't subbed already, please do try to upload videos daily. Um, if not daily, then at least every other day. So let's take a look at this card, which is in Blazing Vortex. If you control a Constellar monster other than itself, you can special summon it from your hand. During your main phase, you can add one Constellar spell trap from your deck to your hand. Those are both uh, hard ones per turns. A Constellar Exceeds monster that has this card as material gains the following effect. Before damage calculation, if this card battles a light or dark monster, you can banish that monster. Now, it's a good extender. It's a level 4, so you can special summon it. And that searching is neat. I figured we would take a look at the Constellar card pool as far as spells and traps and what's available. None of them are inherently great, but being searchable might give them some application, and maybe they'll give us some additional support. Who knows? I really have no idea what the plan is for this card going forward. The last effect is neat. It does allow pretty much any of your Constellar Exceeds monsters the ability to out-problem. I mean, light and dark monsters are very common. Omega, which is one of their rank 4s, um, you know, can make itself immune to spells and traps, so maybe it can out almost any problem card doesn't really dodge monster effects but it's a neat little addition and it doesn't hurt to have that option to allow your monsters to get over stuff but really what you're using this for is both its extender ability and that searching ability which is just decent in and of itself as far as the other constellar main deck monsters that really find a use here we've got constellar Chaos, which is just pretty generically solid cannot be used as synchro material up to twice per turn you can target one constellar monster on the field activate this effect, reduce its level by one, increase its level by one. So, basically you can turn this and another Constellar into rank threes or rank fives, which gives you that pool of being able to go into almost any of the Constellar Xyz monsters, but you can also go into other rank fives in general. The deck used to play cards like Volcasaurus, uh, Windup Zenmayo, which I think is the one, yeah, Zenmayo, um, among other cards. So it's definitely got some, some use, and I think it's a neat card overall. Yeah, it, it doesn't hold up super well, but that level modulation is still neat. It just sucks. You can't use it as a synchro material, so you're limited in what you can do. It's a beast warrior, so it's searchable by tanky, which you just play in the deck. And so there's a lot of ways to access this quickly. I think Chaos will still be a good card for the deck. I just don't know that it's game-breaking, if that explains it. The next card they have, which is an, just an insanely good card, when it came out at the time, really kind of helped vault that deck to the next level. Um, Constellar Sombre. So this was in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. Each of these effects are a hard ones per turn. While it's in the graveyard, if it was sent there this turn, you can normal summon a Constellar monster for one less tribute. I mean, that's a fine effect. It doesn't do a ton, but it's fine. It works um, with what it's supposed to do. But its real powerful effect is you can banish a Constellar monster from your graveyard, target one Constellar monster in your graveyard, and add it to your hand. And if you do, this card gains the following effect. You can normal summon one additional Constellar monster this turn. So basically, it's Recursion from Grave, and it gives you an extra normal summon. So in and of himself, he's basically a one-card Xyz, as long as you have opened another Constellar, which isn't super tough to do, given the 
way the deck is designed to function. And that other effect of normal summoning for one less tribute almost never comes up, but it's neat that it's there, and it does allow in the future if they were to make more Constellar support that was level 5 or 6 that was actually good, then you could bring it out a little bit easier. Sombra, I think, will still be good. I would pick those up if you could, if you can get them super cheap, because it's a decent card. Now, Algidi, I've always been sort of bullish on. It's definitely not a bad card. When it's normal summon, you special summon a level 4 Constellar from your hand. So it's basically like a tin goldfish. Obviously, it has the benefit of being light, and it has the benefit of being a Constellar, so it's searchable by your your cards. It just works better for the archetype. I just don't know how many of it you'd want to play, because if it's normal summon and they Veiler it, Impermanence it, etc., you're in a position now where you've used your normal summon and you can't extend too much. Of course, this is where the new monster kind of helps because he can special summon himself, so it does make Algidi a little bit better just by the fact that it can't be completely shut down with one hand trap. Probably a two of, maybe three, depending on how you would actually put a build together. And then, of course, this is definitely going to be a three of. Pollux is insane. Uh, during the turn each normal summon, you can normal summon one Constellar monster in addition to your normal summoner set. So this effect does not activate. It's a lingering effect that takes effect as soon as he's placed on the field, so it can't be negated by Valor or something like that. Overall, this card was always good even back then. If you open this and Kaos, or you open this and Tanky, you had a way to just put an immediate play on the board, which was always going to be beneficial. This will definitely still be a 3-of card. That goes without saying. Uh, whether or not the other monsters sort of follow that same path remains to be seen. Now, Pollux is 1,700, so he's decent. He can run stuff over. Kaos, obviously 1,800, but with Tanky, gets a boost, so there's some decent flexibility there. We'll take a look at the spells and traps. Now, these are all targets that can be searched by Caduceus. Star Cradle is one that was always decent, maybe as a one-of, but it's very restrictive. Uh, targets, you can stellar monsters in your graveyard, add them to your hand. You cannot conduct your battle phase during the turn you activate this card. So this is immediately really restrictive. Adding them back to hand is great and all, but at the same time, you're locking yourself out of the battle phase, so you can... It's just... It's always been one of those things that's, like, detrimental, whereas with Soul Charge, for example... Soul Charge is giving you such a significant boost by being able to resolve it that that battle phase doesn't mean as much. This is not giving you any board presence. This is giving you monsters back to hand. So while it's good and can set you up with like a Pleiades that you can then respond to on the opponent's turn, it's just iffy. I, I can't say I'm completely sold on this. Then Stellar Belt. Uh, the activation of Light Monsters effects cannot be negated. It's a decent card. I mean, the fact that it's searchable is cool. Maybe against, like, maybe a side deck card if you're playing against something that's like trap heavy or we're going to negate your effects and shut them down i i can't really think of a specific scenario in which this is just insane but it's a decent floodgate that does allow you to resolve your effects without response so that's kind of nice uh star chart was the one i always kind of liked once per turn if an stellar exceeds his special summon you draw a card this is not a once per a hard once per turn it's a once per copy so you have two out you draw two when you can exceed summon it's not bad i mean being searchable does help you can special uh, Caduceus, search this, exceeds for something, draw a card. It's not bad. It's basically um, probably fine as a one of if the in the deck if it's searchable. Tempest is a new one. During the end phase, you can target two Constellar Exceeds monsters you control that have material. Detach all material, and if you do have your opponent's life points, it's fine, but that's going to be really tough to pull off. Uh, once per turn during your standby phase, you can target one Constellar Exceeds you control and one Constellar monster in your graveyard. Attach that monster from the graveyard to it as material. This does allow you to, like, put extra materials on Pleiades, which is really neat. But it's during your standby phase, which is just inherently slow. <clears throat> I, I know this was sort of like a card that came out, and it was intended to function as, like, effective support, but it just doesn't really check off any boxes for me in terms of what Constellars are looking to do. I don't see it giving the deck any substantial advantage. Constellar Twinkle, uh, target Constellar monster you control, increase its level by one or two, and then if this card is in the graveyard, you can banish a Constellar to add it to your hand. I don't hate this card. Um, obviously, the fact that you can play it more than once is great. Like, you use it, you banish something, you add it back. Being searchable does, so it basically, in, in other words, it opens you up to, with Kaos, you can make rank sevens. Not bad. It's definitely worth taking a look at, depending on what direction the deck were to go. But again, the problem with all the spells and traps the deck has access to is that none of them are really pushing you forward all that much. And then we've got Constellar Media, the only trap they have. Uh, during the turn, a card is act this card is activated. If a opponent's monster battles a Constellar monster, the opponent's monster is not destroyed and it is shuffled into the deck at the end of the damage step. So, like, <clears throat> it's a good card in Duel Links. It's a neat card in general just in terms of what it does. But you're talking about battle reliance. You're talking about your monsters having to survive. You're talking about... I mean, there's just so much that would have to go into making this useful. Uh, not a fan. Um, it's really slow. I don't see a scenario in which you would even really look to this card. And then, 
Just wanted to spotlight a few of the XTs. Obviously, M7 is really good. It's two level sixes, but you can kind of bypass that by putting it on top of a Constellar XTs you control. Um, and you cannot use the effect during the turn you summon it that way, which is definitely detrimental. But once per turn, detach a material, target a monster on the field or in the graveyard, return it to the hand. It allows you to recover your own cards, can disrupt your opponent's cards, can give you back your monsters that are on the board to be able to use them again. Um, he's always just been a neat card in anything that can make sixes, but specifically in Constellars, um, just because of what he does. And then, of course, Pleiades is a rank 5. Once per turn, you get the player's turn, detach material, target a card on the field, return it to the hand. He is not a hard once per turn, so if you have two out, you can use the effect more than once. It's a really, like, really good card and one of the better rank 5s out there. It's just, it needs two level 5 lights, so it's not a generic card um, in that regard. Now, Constellars also have access to other Xyz like uh, Satellar Knight Constellar Diamond, which is a neat card, um, and Teller Knight Ptolemaeus, which I, is not technically a Constellar, but it does directly support that archetype so those are cards you could look to as well i just worry that as much as i really like this card he doesn't search anything that's good enough to make that effect great so if they give us another constellar card even something that's not amazing but that like benefits off of being searchable then we could talk about it helping the deck to have some kind of a resurgence but as it stands it's always going to be a fun like low tier option i don't think constellars are going to be making any kind of meta threats anytime soon so let me know what you guys think. Are you a fan of Constellars? Are you excited to see this support? Maybe you guys have been playing the deck for a while and you want to be able to add this new support to it. It definitely does boost the deck. Like, that's not in question. It's just the deck is pretty rough right now as it is, and this is really only going to take it up a few notches, which isn't going to be enough to compete. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know down below what you think. I'd love to talk to you guys in the comments and just read reactions. So I'll see you next time right here at Love Shot.